Welcome. We're delighted to welcome you on this beautiful summer evening. Um, it's great that you're here, not out in the garden, so we can all uh, visit um, Anne Bevan in her amazing studio in, and home in Orkney. Um, Anne is an artist who I think is all about place and uh, she explores the hidden energies embodied in place through her exquisite sculptures, her drawings, her prints and her installations. Um, where we're going tonight is on the mainland of Orkney, um, overlooking Hoy, isn't it Anne? Um, just a wonderful place. I've been lucky enough to be there, uh, go and visit her a few years ago. Um, it's, uh, I think, I'd like to just hand over to Anne and let her tell you all about where she is and what she's been doing. And uh, I'd like you all to welcome her very much. And I hope you all have a drink and we can just settle in. And uh, cheers everyone and enjoy the, enjoy the studio visit. Thank you, Anne. Cheers, Kate, and cheers, cheers. everybody. Um, <clears throat> lovely to, to see you. So I hope you can see me okay because it's very, the sunny in here tonight, which is uh, which is nice, but you'll get you'll get a view round. So if I if I'm a bit in the shade at the moment, um, I'll, I shall come out of the shadows soon. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's great to be invited to do this event. Uh, it's um, it's seven years almost in September when I moved to Orkney, and I'm very fortunate to live on a croft in Orfa, uh, and I'm very fortunate to have. Um, fantastic neighbours and one of them is here tonight. Uh, so me Emma, is one of the friends of the RSE and I'll introduce you to her. Well, I'll not swing this round too much but me is sitting in the corner and when we look around the studio in a second you shall meet me. So that's lovely that she's able to join us and me in person um, tonight. Uh, so yeah I mean moving back to Orkney was quite a shift. I was in Edinburgh before uh, worked at ECA as a lecturer and at Studio at Wasps and very much in that um, fantastic Edinburgh life of um, working as an artist. And uh, basically, uh, well, a few reasons for coming up, um, in, no, in no particular order, but a, a job came up with the University of the Highlands and Islands uh, in Orkney. So it's very unusual to, to um, have an opportunity to have um, a you know, lecturing in, in Orkney. So, so I applied for that and I, I moved up as a, and uh, I've been the head of the art department with um, Orkney College um, UHI here since then. Uh, another big reason was because all my work, as Kate as you mentioned, it's, it's to do with place and it was becoming increasingly to do with returning to the place that I grew up in, uh, which is Stromness and Orkney. Uh, so, it, you know, and I was coming up very frequently, um, partly because of my own artwork and research, and, and also, of course, because my family were very much, and still are very much here. Um, <clears throat> and my, my father was in the sort of latter stages of, of um, having dementia, unfortunately, and it seemed like it was a really good time to move up, to be close to the family with my mother and father and other siblings and to, to, to have the whole Orkney package. So, um, so here I am and I'm very lucky to have um, found this croft, the, the house here. And as I think I said in the little blurb, it's, it's very much, it's very different from a wasp studio. Um, the studio has been, uh, as I might even see, the shadow of a tomato plant. It's at the moment a conservatory with it's not actually full of um, red dots, as I might have thought. They're not. They're still green at the moment, but uh, yeah, uh, um, very much a kind of greenhouse at the moment. And uh, I also practice yoga, and I live here. And it's also since COVID been my lockdown office, um, so it's been a very multifunctional space. And um, it's been great to have. It's always been a studio space at the same time. Um, but uh, good to kind of bring a few things together here for this for this event tonight. Um, I've, I've, I would say I've been really, I mean, apart from having wonderful neighbours who are interesting to socialise with and speak to, they've also been very generous with their root buildings. So um, <laughs> you will see some work that was made in, in May's uh, farm sheds. sheds? Yeah. 
Um, and more recently, I've been working with another neighbour who's an archaeologist, uh, Mark Edmonds, who uh, has got a fantastic workshop. So we've been doing sort of messy stuff uh, up there. Um, I should say I kind of um, work in all sorts of different media. I trained in sculpture, um, probably did more photography than sculpture when I was a student, um, but very much work in, in, with mixed media and, and do a lot of collaborative work. So hence working with, uh, with Mark next door has been, we have really interesting conversations about the work as we make it. And uh, we brought some of the pieces that we've been working on over the last, well, actually the last year. Yeah, quite a, lot, a slow ongoing um, project. This, uh, but I'll I'll talk to you in more detail about that uh, later on. So, uh, well, I'll give you a wee swing around the space anyway. Uh, yes, please, and uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Prepare to get a bit dizzy. Okay. I'm gonna just pick you up here. I'm on the iPad today. I thought it's a bit easier to to kind of show around. So I'll switch the camera. Here we go. So. Ah, oh, here's me. <laughs> uh, sometimes it takes a wee minute to focus, so. And uh, it's a nice high space and and hence being blasted by the, the sunlight at the moment. You see my tomato plants. Um, and they're slightly masking, but um, there's hoi, which is part of a, well, uh, if, I'm sure a lot of you have been to Orkney and you'll know Hoy because it's the high island and it's very famous for all sorts of reasons, for having old men and, and amazing um, landscape and walking. That's the Ward Hill. It's a very sunny sea, but you'll see reasons for that later too. So, I mean, in a way I sort of feel like I am living, well, I am living in the studio, but the outside is as much my studio as the inside and so when I have things in the window these aren't all mine actually and um, Kate recognised the Duncan Robertson in the middle there that's May's house just across the field and Stromness across there beautiful Hoy High Lighthouse that I think came on about <clears throat> I think it was about 20 past nine last night so quite early um just photos prints Plants. Now, I also realise I need to be careful <coughs> because I have, of course, made, done that thing of putting sculptures on the floor that, as uh, everybody knows, are there to trip over. <laughs> so I'm going to talk more about these later, but these are plaster casts. Can you see these okay? Okay, this, this yeah, is a bit they look fascinating, actually. Um, <clears throat> I, I love the stone floor as well, Anne. Is that local Orkney stone? Mm, not this floor, but next door there are flagstones that are the, the original stones from the from the Croft House. Gosh. Um, I suspect these might have come from the Far East, India. <laughs> oh, these are cave floors? Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, well, there you go. Okay. You I go. assume I, I, I thought they okay. were. <laughs> about that. It's not a flagstone. I, I always think the ones next door are um, the originals. Gosh, so, it's beautiful. Uh, a mould and casts. I'll, I'll go back to these. I'm just going to give you a little glimpse, just a little spin round just to start. As you can see, well, as we all do, hoard things, things uh, accumulate and they, and they, I think they com communicate as well as they accumulate. So it's been good sort of bringing some of these casts in today because uh, I had the I've had various elements here over the last year or two, but they, they move around and they come back and they go off to exhibitions occasionally. Um, or they're, they're just here. You can't see this rather big drawing that's been here for a while. It's now superimposed with uh, tomato plants. <laughs> um, and a little cabinet that belonged to my grandmother. Uh, it's become quite influential and very interested in display and museums and what we find and what might end up in, uh, in a cabinet of curiosities. And I'm very interested in geology, as you can probably tell from all these rocks and rock formations. 
though not surprising really growing up with the amazing cliffs and coastline there's a cross section of <coughs> uh, a bit of the rock face at the shore round from Stromness and also very interested in poetry and writing it's a poem by Robert Rendell an Arcadian poet and not only a poet he also was a, a he was the Orkney conchologist so he was very interested in shells and uh, very knowledgeable and um, I've just a few things sort of lying about here this uh, I'm going to talk to you about maps actually mapping has become quite an important part of my practice and well when I say mapping I mean I'm not a geographer but I'm interested in maps and I love going to the archive in Kirkwall and seeing all the old maps but this is a new this is a very new map this is actually a map um, that's been shared by uh, researchers or um, people at Aquaterra which is an environmental consultancy firm and they're looking at shipping routes, they're looking at the, the, the symmetry of the sound, this is Holly Sound. And um, these are all to do with research towards renewables and uh, marine energy devices. So as you might know, because it's becoming more and more um, known about, is Orkney is very much at the centre of marine renewable energy development. So that's another kind of interesting thing that's happening in Orkney at the moment, along with all the, the kind of incredible environmental landscape that we live in and the um, archaeology, which of course you'll all be familiar with because it's so sort of famous. <laughs> and, and just to maybe, I, I pulled out, sorry me, you're going to be in this one, but <laughs> um, the images behind you which actually were shown in a different form in the RSA a few years ago as photographic prints um, but these were uh, part of a, a whole body of work that I did with a marine scientist uh, called Kate Darling uh, who's based in Edinburgh and um, they keep coming back their, their forums and they've come out again today because they needed to well, they needed to mask off the mess of, of my kind of office and library at the back there where I do my teaching from at the moment. Um, and I don't play the piano very often, but it, it, it likes to be here. So, yeah, I'm just going to keep going round again. Sorry, I hope you're not getting seasick here, are you? Not you okay? yet. No, we're okay. Yeah. <laughs> so a nice old map of no this is the sound so this is mapping the sea this is mapping the sound of the hoi sound um and you know as you can see these maps are beautifully graphic i mean they're, they're works of art and their own right really and i'm very much collecting these images that's a christmas card by carol dunbar but joy hoi joy i like these uh, silly little connections that happen sometimes but uh, joy has been very appreciated over the last few months and silver galena silver lady uh, connections keep coming back too so as you maybe glimpsed earlier this this is a cast of a wavy rock from the west shore in stromness and just next to it is a bit of the real rock, which is actually wafer thin. You can see a sort of trace of the square because I did a cast, a mould of it. This rock, to remind me, 390 million years old. This is a, a segment of Lake Orchidy that used to be just north of the Tropic of Capricorn. So, you know, we're surrounded by this ancient rock um i'll talk more about the casting uh, in the slideshow it'll make maybe a bit more sense because these are all fragments in the studio here at the moment and what i'd like to try and do as we sort of you know about, as i talked to you about what i'm doing uh, tonight is to try and um set up some of the connections between these fragments 
So I do a lot of casting, as you can see. Uh, this is the inside of the mould. So I'm very interested in that process of casting that's sort of to do with negative and positive. It's very photographic, I find. It's like printmaking. You've got, you never quite know, you know what you're casting. This is a cast of uh, a rock of labradorite, which I shall talk to you more about later as well. There's lots of stories with these connections too, and the storytelling is very much part of, um, I suppose, my growing up. And I was very lucky to grow up with this writer uh, next door. He was a friend of the family, George Mackay Brown. I'm sure you, you're familiar with him. And this book, Beside the Ocean of Time, um, is, is a kind of connection with a project that I've been working on since I returned to Orkney. So I'm just going to read you a little bit from it. Yeah. Right. You might, if you've read this, you'll be very familiar with. But this, this is one of the, I find this is such a connection to my work generally, and but certainly since I've moved back to Orkney. Okay. A wave in the sound. One of those seventh waves that comes in higher and colder and more rampant than the six ordered predictable waves at either side of it. Crashed against the round ancient ruin on the shore and carried away another stone that had stood for 12 centuries. That stone would trundle here and there with the tides flung back and forth in the middle of ocean for a few decades, growing smaller and ever more spherical until it was at last a scattering of sand amongst the oyster greens and the grains of crab and cormorant. A hundred years on and a child might be building a sandcastle on the edge of the tide on a summer afternoon. So I think that child was me, <laughs> there will be many other children, hundreds of children too. But that, that kind of interest in sand and place, um, I thought just to connect up the, those big floating images that are behind me, is that this is how they started. So these are grains of sand off the beach and as you can see it's all back to front isn't it? It's back to front with you. No, so it's us. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I always forget. Yeah. yeah. So this is, as you can see, from Shetland, and these are little forums, and you wouldn't be able to see um, probably if I did this, but this is a magnifier. But if you were, well, you can. Oh, it works. Bit. That it's, works. That's amazing. It's a first yeah. for zoom. It's a zoom. It really is a zoom. This. Yeah. Proper. Uh, zoom. So if you can see maybe some shell shapes in there. So these, these forums are, I mean, when I was working with Kate Darling, she's looking at um, ocean temperature change, climate change, and, and, and these are indicators of, of environmental change. They've also been used for research for the oil and gas industry for, for um, what, since the 50s, I understand as well. But um, they're, they're very ancient and they're also alive in the sea now as plankton. So interesting, pity things. And, and they have led to, um, to, to kind of things like this that you might have seen that was again in the, um, shown in the RIC a few years ago as a collection. Uh, I'll show you more images of them later. Wonderful work with the So forum means perforated form. Um, what is that made of? What oh, is it, it's clay. It's Daz air drying clay. It's very simple. <laughs> It's modelled over a balloon and then I burst the balloon. Oh wow. And it's a child. <laughs> this is my sand from Japan and these, this sand is from a beach in Okinawa and there is called star sand but you can't see that but the tiny little stars. Mm -hmm. So anyway as you can tell I'm really interested in scale and place and time. So yeah, well, I think maybe um, we could take a look at the slideshow now. I've, I've asked Alana if she can share them because I'm just on the iPad here and I thought we could 
next year if she does the <laughs> no, messy yeah. stuff and um, me and I will move yeah. over. So we're going to move over to um, the table here. There we go. Just so that May can see as well. So, oops. May, if you want to take your yeah. chair in. We're, we're doing our social distancing here. Just two secs. Okay. Feel free to talk a minute if you want, Kate. Okay. Is this a map? Oh, this is a local map, isn't it, Anne? Yeah, okay. Now I'm just getting it up here so we can see. Okay. See yeah. that, mate? Right. Yes, I can. Okay, so we're trying to cater for virtual and real here. <laughs> I think we're going to manage. Yeah. Okay. And it also means I can see the next slides that are coming up. Too. Yeah, so here we are back at Hoy Sound. And just to give a sense of where me and I live, we're on the bottom right hand corner. So we're actually off this map because this just goes to Clestrum. But if you can see the sound of Clestron on the bottom right, uh, and we're just below there. So we're right on the, on the mouth of, of Scapa Flow. And um, Hoy Sound, as you can see, is an amazing space too. So Hoy Sound is the entrance to Stromness. It's the main shipping route. It, it's got an incredible kind of history of, of um, well, Stromness has got an incredible history of, Herring fishing and um, Hudson's Bay Company, transatlantic trading, um, you name it, I'm sure a lot of you are really familiar with, uh, with um, those sort of connections. So it, it's a very, it's not remote, we don't like that word in Orkney, it's, it's absolutely has been at the centre of, of trade and travel and archaeology as well, obviously, over, over the ages. And um, so uh, if you could do the next slide please Solana. Um, so when I came back I actually uh, applied for an opportunity that came through the uh, Peer Art Centre uh, which are fantastic Peer Art Centre are another reason for moving back to Orkney because um, you, you're they're a fantastic gallery and museum and also have lots of really exciting uh, can, um, projects for, for artists. So this project was called Orkney, Beside the Ocean of Time, after the book that I've just read from. And uh, it was an interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary project with um, a whole list of people from different disciplines. But um, the main people I were collaborating with was a geologist and an anthropologist. So my proposal was to work around the West Shore of Strongness, and this is a part of that. You might recognize that uh, wavy rock there. Um, and basically, I proposed to have my, I was to be an artist in residence at home and um, my studio was to be outside along the West Shore. So the next slide please. So I, I literally did take my casting materials out and, you know, had to time it with the tide and this connected up with works I've, I've made in the past. Uh, oh, we've got a visitor, the cat's just come in. <laughs> Hello. Oh, here. Okay, cat might just jump in front of the computer. Um, hang on. Oh, oh crikey! <laughs> cat zoom. <laughs> this is Winkle the cat. <laughs> oh, hey, I don't know if you like cats. I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> so this is um, so these cats ended up in. Um, well, I, I worked in them and and sat in these. Uh, uh, barn shed there uh, during the winter it was quite cold but uh, they were cast in concrete and they were very thin kind of reinforced sheets of, of cast concrete but you'll see that I keep silvering everything and uh, the silvering if you go into the next slide please Alana um, it's to do with reflection obviously but it's to do with taking away it's Kind of creating a new surface on the material so it is like the the shimmering that you saw on the on the sea there as we see uh, a certain light as it as it hits the surface of the waves um but it's also a sort of moment in time it's like a glimpse it sort of changes so it, it I, in my mind uh, it brings a sort of transience to to something that might be quite a sort of heavy physical object so it kind of removes it it's a bit like a snapshot a photograph uh, sculptural snapshot. 
And when, when it came into the gallery, and this is in the Peer Arts Centre, as part of this uh, project, Ocean of Time project, um, I showed it with uh, uh, a video uh, that I worked with Mark Jenkins with, who's a filmmaker based here in Orkney as well. And we very much collaborated in, in, in video um, waves and objects around the West Shore and sculptures were there too. And they came into the gallery to kind of bring the outside in. And the next slide is, uh, is just a bit further back and you might recognise some of these objects from things in the studio here. So the objects had their little stories around them and the collaboration with the other um, the geologist and anthropologist and there was a, a paleoecologist and a literary person who's looking at Margaret Tate uh, is her work. So I, I got the, the group to kind of give their interpretations of these objects and, and that was part of the whole conversation as well. And I'm racing through this a little bit just because I know that um, time's flying by already. And one of the things that uh, we didn't, and this is actually stuck in the RSA at the moment, I think it's in lockdown. Um, it's, it was part of the last exhibition there. So this, this was a, a, a ripple rock uh, around the West Shore, as you can see. And um, if you go into the next slide, please, Lana. It was literally uh, covered in, it wasn't quite tin foil, but it was, a, it was aluminium sheeting. And um, we, we worked just over a few hours to, to cover this, this rock. If you wouldn't mind just going back again. And, and to bring up the surface texture of the rock. So this, this um, 390 million year old um, trace of the seabed um, from the Lake of Orkady was being covered just for a few hours in this shimmery, silvery Galena Sea sound. Um, so to, to kind of bring a kind of reflection, but also a kind of magic I mean, we go back to the storytelling and the child on the beach. So I was, I do continue to be that child on the beach, covering things in, in silvery foil. And involving people in it too. It was lovely to hear Kenny Hunter last week, if you were at Kenny's talk, and Kenny saying about sculpture being a social, a very social activity. And that's something that I've always found as well. I, I used to work at Powder Hall Broads actually as a, casting technician when I, I first left college and I've done a lot of oh, we, you know collaborative work but work with you know casting and bronze casters and and with lots of different disciplines as well you know including um, theatre and music and it's something that I, I find very stimulating it's a very important part of, of the way that I work um, and um, and actually just to make a connection with my teaching here in, uh, with UHI, one of the master's courses we run is called Art and Social Practice. So it, it's embracing the idea that a social practice is an art practice. It's not just all about the finished objects. So it's very much about the process and the conversations and about involving people. Uh, so the next slide, yeah, there's the rock without the silver in it. Um, it's still there, still very beautiful. And the next slide. And the next one is uh, kind of from a few years ago. So uh, it's also, I mean, I made this on my own actually. I was living, I went across to Ratquick in Hoy and uh, I'd been eyeing up a boulder for quite a few years thinking that I would like to do something with it. So I just basically, um, I had to go with the tides as well and, and, and kind of just set to, I think this was actually tin foil, um, the eco foil. But as you can see, it's as much, it's, it's about the personal kind of experience of, of doing it, of covering it in a crystal-like way. But it's a very temporary thing. It, it's something that's just in the moment. I photograph it and then I take it away again. I take the foil away again. Um, I'm conscious that I don't want to use up lots of tin aluminium foil, but it's part of the material process. And then just to go on to the next one, I mean, one of the things I've talked about photography, but videos become, it always has been actually, but it's become, I'm sort of 
recurring again uh, with with this work is uh, working with moving image, and uh, you'll recognise this object too. So you know they they kind of appear in all sorts of places, um, and I'm just going to show a couple of minutes clip. Actually, hopefully it'll play okay, Elena. Um, the next. It's on repeat, so it's been layered. Probably fine, Alana. We'll maybe pause it there. Great, thanks. We, thanks. So, well, it, it, it did work eventually. It's a wee bit, um, it's meant to be smoother than that, obviously. You'll probably see it uh, a bit differently. We'll all be seeing it differently. That's the thing with, uh, with Zoom and whatnot. But the, the point of this was it was about taking these objects, which have been recurring images, and, and thinking about the idea of being underneath and above the water, in the water, on the surface, and above and playing with ideas of inversion and inside out and, and kind of slightly slow motion as well. So it became slightly um, surreal, magical, um, kind of hyper real in a way. So yeah, so that that's um, a kind of continuing work actually. In fact, so Gemma and I are still working on, on sound. I mean, the video has existed for quite a while now, but we're, we're continuing to develop sound with with this and improvising, um, thinking about sound waves and wave, water waves, sea waves, um, you know, the wave structures and the rocks, you know, all these different forms of waves and the energy that's in a wave. So we're going to the next one. Um, I'm kind of picking up a little bit of the, you might recognise this from a few years ago, but um, it's, it's, I suppose it's a sort of connecting the objects again with, and, and increasingly thinking that of objects as archeological object, objects that they kind of start to form their own archeologies. So um, these have existed in a cabinet. And the next slide, Alana, is um, how they were displayed very much in a kind of museum cabinet. And um, I'm interested in that, that kind of, shift between the outside raw real inverted commas world that you know with with wind and rain and 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 kind of the elements um, and the wetness of it with within inside you know a space uh, whether it's a gallery space or a or a museum space and what it's like to be inside a cabinet so so it's kind of exploring i suppose again those those different contexts for the, the sculpture and the video of the different works. And then, so we are just, I'm just picking up with just a few, just a couple of images really from older works because these works, they're all works that have connected to Orkney, they were all shown at the Peer Art Centre and um, commissions through the Peer Art Centre. Really. And, uh, and again, connecting with the, the next work I'll show you in the studio here, which is very much to do with exchange and um, thinking about distance and travel. Uh, this work was called Source, and it was an exchange of water between Venice and Stromness. When I say exchange, the Stromness water hasn't actually gone to Venice yet, but I hope to do it sometime. Uh, but this is Venetian water being um, poured 
into a cylinder in Stromness Harbour. It's actually the pier of the Pier Art Centre. In fact, uh, Kate Michael took this photo. <laughs> so I think quite a few, a few of these photos, Michael looked over um, fantastic photography. Uh, the, the pier that I'm standing on here was actually uh, the Hudson's Bay Company pier. And it was where the boats came in and the warehouses on the pier and the boats went off to um, Labrador and the Norwast, as they called it. So the next slide, I think it's just a couple, just a couple close-ups. This is very much a kind of um, southern exchange with a classical south, uh, but uh, cliched, but Orkney's known, Stromness is known as the, the Venice of the North, as I'm sure many other places are in the North too. <laughs> But uh, I like Venice. <laughs> uh, very like Venice, yeah. Well, it is actually, yeah. I mean, the steps go down into the sea, and, you know, all that. Oh, yeah. So that that's the last slide, and um, without going into the whole story of that, I just wanted to those la last two works um, just connect up briefly, and I think I think we're okay for time. Just yeah, we're uh, good. Yeah, we're okay for time. Yeah, so we've got ten minutes easily. Yeah, ten minutes. Yeah. So what, what I was going to just um, connect up with now was this current work that I'm doing and that's the, the white blobs on the floor, which I'll give you a closer look at, are casts of, right, I'll take you um, to see this uh, lump of rock here again. So remember this. May do feel free to, if you want to move around by the way. I don't know if I go in close here, if you might be able to start to see. It looks very pitted, Anne, is it? Well, it looks it, quite pitted. It's a schist. Um, it's, it's got, I don't know if you can see any blue in there, but it's labradorite. Um, I wonder if this one, this was one from my grandmother's cabinet. It might, you might not see the blue, but anybody that knows labradorite will oh, you can see a little bit. Amazing. So anyway, uh, blue, if I'm not a great colourist, but actually I, love, I do use blue a lot in my work. So I do, I do work with colour, but in terms of its sort of mineral material form. So this, this lump of labradorite came from a pile of other lumps of labradorite um, from a house in Stromness. And it was, came across in the 1800s as ballast from Labrador. Uh, and basically there would be um, Stromness men or Cadians going across to work in Hudson's Bay and then the ballast would come back. They would have taken all sorts of different ballast, not only Labradorite, but the Labradorite has got quite a magical connection and not least because that came from one of the ports in Labrador was called Hopedale and uh, this was named a, in brief, I'll not give you, there's a whole, you know, I mean, there's a thesis in a book here for sure, but um, the, the Moravian missionaries in the well, beginning of the 1700s went across and as part of their kind of converting um, Inuit and um, local peoples to Christianity, they um, set up missionary stations along the, the coast there. And one of them they named Hopedale. So, I'll, I'll do a quick leap to um, a fact that Kate will know, but I grew up in a house that was called Hopedale and my mother still lives there. Um, and I, I only really started to realise this connection quite recently, that the ship's captain who built the house of Hopedale um, sailed the shipping route from Hopedale in Labrador. So this rock has a really personal connection to, to me and to my family and to the house that is still there. And so as part of that exploration, apart from really enjoying just looking at this beautiful rock, um, I've worked with um, Mark, uh, Edmund's neighbour, uh, to make this, this mould. Uh, it's, it's sort of big and heavy enough that I can't work on my own with it. So it was really good to collaborate with them in making this mould. And of course, it's this incredible kind of cave-like space. And then we've started to uh, make casts. Um, and of course, the minute you do a cast, you realise if it's a holocast, it's got a space inside it too. 
spaces yeah. and spaces. And of course they have lost their labradorite blue and they've become more like icebergs. And what we, I mean, these aren't finished pieces, it's very much a work in progress, but um, we're proposing uh, to, to work with Mark Ed, um, Jenkins, the filmmaker, and hopefully Rebecca Marr as well, who's a photographer, who's also got an interest in, in Labradorite, and to do a collaborative work, an exhibition, and hopefully connecting up with a museum or gallery in Labrador itself. So that's the plan. Um, but at the moment, they exist as kind of quite ghostly uh, plaster casts. Um, so there's lots that, I mean, I'm, you know, it, it, the next part of the process, I've got ideas, but um, we'll see, we'll see what happens, but might involve dipping and uh, working with, with colour. Um, it might involve uh, being in cabinets and reflections of glass and the in underneath and perhaps video um, inside and outside. So, yeah, um, that's where I'm at. <laughs> but, you know, as with work in progress, there's so much you could say about it. <laughs> and it's just all so amazing and fascinating. Um, I, I'm always struck with each of these uh, studio visits, how very different each person's practice is and how deeply personal they are. And mm -hmm. we're hugely privileged, I think, especially at this lockdown time to, you know, that people are willing to open their homes and their studios and their thought processes. And it's an incredibly intimate view that we, that most people never get when they see the work on the walls mm -hmm. and I don't know about anyone else, but I've been really struck by, you, you know, your cabinet of curiosity and how all these objects surround you and they all form interesting connections and patterns and they feed off into each other's, you know, mm. you, it's like you don't lock them down and say, right, this is this project and that's going to be it. It's, um, it's such a kind of open and searching process, I, I feel. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, thanks. That's, how it, that's what it feels like, which is, um, which is good. And that's what I enjoy about it. And um, I guess it, it's, a, I mean, in a way, these stables, I mean, the rocks are, well, the rocks, of course, are solid. You know what you're working with, you know. Yeah, yeah. But the stories, you know, the, the whole you know, looking into the archives and reading the stories. And of course, especially with current events with, you know, Black Lives Matter and, you know, revisiting our colonial past. Orkney has, um, well, I have to say, probably celebrated the connections with the Hudson's Bay Company. And, but the reality is, I mean, they were, you know, killing beavers and foxes and, you know, it was for the fur trade and, and not to mention what happened, you know, with, with, with you know, the indigenous populations of, of Canada, which is horrendous. Mm. So it's kind of through the process of making the art and discussing the art, you, yeah, you come up with these other, these other well, with mm. understandings, I suppose. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm very struck. Oh, is that the cat? <laughs> I need to see the cat. <laughs> oh. oh. Thank God. Oh. <laughs> She doesn't think much of it. She's shaking her head. <laughs> oh, she's been very friendly to me there. That's good. <laughs> a uh, show cat. Yeah. Show cat. <laughs> Everyone needs a show cat. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really interesting your work with the Labradite. I mean, just starting at the, the last object first with, with this, this short discussion about it's, a, it's you're talking about it's a foreign object that's come into Orkney. Mm -hmm. and um, it's still a stone, but it's it's fascination of something that's come in on the ballast is, you know, like Orkney is about journeys, isn't it? I mean, yeah. no yeah. one, you know. Absolutely. And it, it's about connecting through places too. So I think that, um, I mean, that's why it's really important in the way that we do manage to connect with, with people in Labrador because their side of the story is probably com well, will be completely different. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think, you know, materials, I mean, I'm, I'm really interested in how materials um, have those histories and stories themselves, like they are 
of course, you know, the mining and excavation and, uh, you know, the, the whole um, consumption of, of materials is a, is a whole story in itself. And I'm, I'm interested in that whole um, understanding of, of where things come from and, oh, yeah. you know, where they end up. And that they actually, and that actually and maybe that's why I keep, I'm starting to keep recycling sculptures now because... I, lo I love the fact that these objects get, I, I wrote down as you were talking, the objects are like players in the theatre of your art. So they, they come on in bit parts and that they're, you see how they can be reused and recycled. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, the cat's just trampling over the... Um, Computer, okay, fine. Sorry, Kate. Yes, no, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just that they are performers, you know, and I, I'm interested in. I mean, I'm not a performance artist, but there is a degree of perform. Well, not performance of of um, being in the moment and of mm. uh, of, of being involved and in connecting through material. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's beautiful. I love that. I love the fact that sculptors need people in the way that us boring old painters don't so much you know where you're much better collaborators i like to i i think you know <laughs> uh, i mean that's that's why i enjoy and that's why i'm, I'm you know enjoy you know i'm involved in education as well because mm -hmm. as you're having those conversations with students and yeah. uh, it's a very live thing and you know it's amazing to be able to work in orkney and to work with people all over the world with with uhi so you know it's it's even I mean, in some ways more so than when I was in the city. I think I feel there's a lot more of kind of international connections. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, I'm. I'm just going to put. I'm just going to put it back onto gallery view now to say see everybody. Um, we've got ten more minutes, and it's great. If, if anyone wants to kind of put their faces on, it would be really nice to see you all, and. Uh, unmute yourselves and would anyone like to ask something since you have um i'm very interested in your interest in the connections with canada and at, at that level of the stone but are you are you influenced at all by the history of orkney and the people because it's it's coming up so much more that it's a, a very very important um center of civilization a long long time ago does does that influence your work at all? Uh, uh, yes, but but it's not the, it's not this, I, I suppose um, my involvement with people is probably more in the present and uh, right. I work with other people, you know, like the work with anthropologists is their main interest is in people, but I'm, I am interested in that. So I think it's more about the, uh, it's, it's about the conversations and it's about the, interactions mm -hmm. and it's about people's connection with place as well mm -hmm. so it's it's kind of it's the next level of the you know it might not be the individual but but you know the, the story with the labrador is very mm -hmm. much about the person joe linkletter who had the the shipping line and uh, so yeah but there's there's no hierarchy there of people objects so that in a way we share a landscape mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm really interested in, in what it, the responses that he books from you. Yeah, yeah. I know. Well, we, it's, a, it's a bit of a cliche, but whenever you move around just across the field, everybody goes, oh, you are completely different. You know, it's like that shift of orientation. <laughs> yeah. Oh, huge. And it's just the something you don't notice. I mean, I lived in the city for most of my life, you know, apart from growing up in Orkney. It, you're not... I, aware of it I am totally aware of it in the city too but but it's something it's and, and I think it's to do with the low line that's for me too is you can really see there's a fantastic poem by Robert Rendell that's called Angle of Vision and that idea of it's back to sort of maps again but that you can see you know you can almost do triangulation you know, between your house and here and hoy and hoy sound and that kind of you know um yeah, you, 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 it's almost like you've got you've got one of those uh, beams going across that you know, the surveyors use to. Yeah, to keep it. But then it's memory as well. It's it's experience. It's not as kind of mathematical as that. Mm, amazing. Um, I wrote down just moments before.
before you said it, that uh, Orkney is not remote. It's one of the least remote places I've ever visited. I've been there only a handful of times, and every time I've been there, it felt like I was at the centre of the universe. And what has struck me over the years is how many artists, writers, poets, musicians uh, either return there, having been brought up there, or move there uh, for their creative practice. What, I mean, you, you're obviously from there and you went back yourself. What, how would you define Orkney as a place to be a practitioner in, in some form of creativity? What is it about this place for you? Hmm. I think, I mean, I, I, can, I can only go back in my lifetime, but I mean, it, it's just incredibly rich. I mean, I guess when, you know, people you you next door to people i mean everybody knew george mckay brown you know he wasn't a kind of remote writer you know he was absolutely just on the street and speaking to folk and in the pub and you know it, everybody it's about communication so not that we're going to the pub anymore <laughs> but but it's you know people are open and actually um what's been quite interesting so i'm sort of jumping a little bit Robbie, but what's been interesting with this covid um, life that we've been in is how sociable it's been and how people you know the walk I meant to say actually that this walk around the West Shore has been revived because I've been staying in Stromness quite a bit um, with, with mum but the the conversations uh, and it's not just about like everybody's an artist as Joseph Boyce says but you know everybody that you bump into is involved in some creative thing whether it's a scientific creative thing or writing or you know like professionals or amateurs there's a huge cultural kind of you know i mean amdram uh writing you know people aren't necessarily making their living from it but everybody's involved in some sort of creative practice i would say you just had your painting group this afternoon <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah but yeah. it is an inspiring Absolutely. place but it, <laughs> But it takes feeding though, like people, it takes people to do that. It doesn't just happen by, you know, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of hard work by people, um, you know, things like the St. Magnus Festival, um, you know, the music scene, you know, to cutting edge contemporary music, Peter Maxwell Davis was, was an incredibly um, difficult thing to do at the time. And now it's mainstream. So a lot of people put a lot of effort and hard work into challenging um, the norms at the same time there's been a really thriving folk scene revival you know um, it's there's investment the schools have you know invested in music education I had a fantastic art teacher who's still a practicing artist uh, John Cumming you know it, it's that kind of connection and I think you know so it's, it's connected through education and the place and through communication with you know I think yeah anyway it's good. It's good. I think we're all going to want to come up for a proper real life visit, I think. Don't you, everyone? I think we should all, you know, as soon as we can, we need to have a Friends of the RSA um, onto the boat or, you know, are we short crossing maybe? <laughs> but it would be, it, I think it would be an incredible cultural uh, tour, which would include, um, you know, the, the, the um, archaeological digs and the Pier Art Centre and visiting some of the incredible artists like Anne, who is living there. And anyway, Anne, thank you so much for your time, your insights and sharing your amazing um, headquarters of everything in your studio, including the cats. And uh, I'd just like us all to have a clap and, and say thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>